Hey guys, Christine here, and I want to show you guys inside of our brand new science curriculum, Rabbit Trails Through Space. Guys, this curriculum is so beautiful and so well done, and I cannot wait to show you inside of it. So let me uh, make sure that I'm getting this shared into our group right now. Um, if you're not a part of our group, it is um, Relaxed Homeschoolers the Rabbit Trails Way. And so it's just a really great place to, sorry, just a second, there we go. It's a really great place to um, get to know more about rabbit trails. We just had our launch party in there a couple, or last week. Um, and so you guys are the first ones inside that group to see any of our new launches. It's just a great place for support. We have conversations in there every single day. You get to just, you know, make sure you're seeing all the things. Because when you follow a page, of course, you only get so many notifications, right? Facebook doesn't show you everything. When you're inside the group, you can click to get all the notifications if you want so that you're not missing a single thing. But it's not even only about rabbit trails. It's about homeschool support and just having a lovely, lovely community. And it really is that. So. Um, so it's all shared over there. And if you guys want to join, I'll put the links down below when we are all finished. But let's dig into rabbit trails through space. So we do have three different science curriculums. So this is a brand new one. Like I said, was just released last week and people are loving it already. It's so exciting. So our um, science is a little bit different than our other curriculum because it doesn't have... Um, several main books. It only has two main books that you're going to be using for every single lesson. But then, of course, inside of the rabbit trails and the library books um, pages, you're going to get more picture books uh, listed in there for you guys to go and look at as well. And I'll show you just a few of those in a minute. I don't have all of the ones in the rabbit trails and library list section because it's way too many books. But I did grab some of the best ones to show off to you guys. So our main books, um, the first one is The Mysteries of the Universe. This is so, so beautifully illustrated. Um, and it has a nice little ribbon bookmark, which I think is just a really nice touch. And this, you know, the pages are all gold. It's just a really cool book. Um, let me show you guys inside of it a little bit. There's a table of contents for you. So you can go through, easily find what pages you need for the different lessons. Here's a beautiful Saturn picture and they're nice short lessons in here so it's written in kind of storybook form even though it's a reference book so it's not like it's going to be super duper long for every single lesson which I really think is great for a curriculum like this because it gives you the information that you need but then you can always get more information out of all those picture books so it doesn't become overwhelming Ooh, this is cool the nebula is such cool pictures. I really love it. And then the poetry book, which is also another main book that goes with this curriculum, is again, absolutely gorgeous. Really, really cute book. Let's look inside of it real quick too. It has all these little cutouts, which is hard to see with the camera, but there's little cutouts even here and all throughout the book, which is just like a little added element that makes it a lot of fun. Let me show you this galaxies page. It's really neat. How beautiful is that? And there's a little cutout on that one. Just really makes an extra cool element to like look forward to that on every page, finding the cutout and seeing what's behind it and how it's, you know, uh, tied in to the next page. There's a solar system and the cutouts right there to see on the next page. Really, really beautifully done. And then of course they're all poems. So you get a poem in every single lesson um, that you can use as copy work, you can use for memorization, you can just have a good old poetry tea time, whatever it is that you want to do with it. Oh, Jupiter's a really cool one. I really love that. Such a cool poetry book. So those are your two main books that are, I guess, considered the required books to go with this curriculum. There you go. And, um, Everything else is completely optional. So let me show you inside the curriculum real quick, and then I'll show you a couple of the books that I have on hand. Um, a lot of them I know our library has. We have an itty-bitty little library. Um, so they're very easy to get at the library for all of the rabbit trails and library list books, so you don't feel need to feel pressure to buy a bunch of them. These are ones I bought because they're just amazing books, and I want them in my home library. So, all right, so we're going to go through the moon lesson here. 
So every lesson has a title like that. And then every single lesson, you're going to have the lesson portion that will tell you what pages to read inside of our reference book. And then there's always gonna be an opportunity for observation and journaling. So this just gives your children an opportunity to do kind of like that nature journaling, but do it space style. Um, and that's just a really neat way of just bringing some art into it and just a different mode of memorization. Because when kids write stuff down, some of them might be those visual kind of learners. And so I know that's how I am. Like when I took notes, especially like in high school, right? When I took notes, I remember where they are on the page. I may not remember what they say, but I remember where they are on the page and I was very visual in that way. So when children are doing stuff like um, nature journaling, they may not remember what it says necessarily, but they're gonna remember those pictures and those might stand out in their minds if they're that visual kind of learner. And they might be to where when they write something down, they're able to remember it better. So that's just one way for kids to kind of, you know, get some of that information in their brains and to make it stick for them. There's also copy work in every single lesson. And so the copy work in this is going to go with the poetry book. And so you can copy as much of the poem as you want that's appropriate for your child. So if they're younger, they're going to do a little bit less. If they're older, they can do the whole thing. And then there's also going to be a Bible verse that goes with every single lesson too. So you can use that as copy work. You can use it for memorization. You can use it just in conversation. And then like all of our lessons, there's a little Bible lesson that goes with the Bible verse as well. And so it's just a really sweet way to tie in the Bible verse into the lesson. And so this is where a lot of apologetics comes into it because of course, when we're looking at big reference books like this, we all know that the DK books, these are gonna be evolution based, right? And so a lot of Christians don't believe in evolution. And so that's something that we wanted to tie into the lessons to have that apologetics piece. So if it's something to where maybe your family does believe in evolution, you can leave that part out. If your family believes in a young earth, you can tie in the apologetics lessons. And so it's just a really sweet way to bring up those conversations because I feel like when we hide those topics from our children, they're not gonna grow up strong in the faith, but when they're young and they're already getting that foundation and getting those apologetics, they're gonna grow up super strong in the faith and super strong in their beliefs. And it's just really important to get those lessons into your kids. And it's really hard to find that ingrained into the lesson as opposed to having to get something separate, right? You don't need a different apologetics lesson for your child. They're gonna get it right here inside of the science lessons, just completely naturally in conversation. So of course, in every single lesson, we have a some fun page. And so it'll be some type of hands-on fun, whether it's an experiment, this is doing the moon phases with Oreos, of course, because we can't skip that. And I have a free printable for you guys on my website that you can get to go with this. But every single um, some fun section will give you the instructions what to do here and any supplies that you'll need right there. And then of course, a beautiful picture of um, what it's supposed to look like. And then we get into our rabbit trove page. I have these out of order, here we go. So the rabbit trails page will bring you into those picture books. So it'll give you picture book suggestions. It'll also have a YouTube video suggestion for you guys to check out. So this is something um, to learn all about the moon for this lesson. And so every single one will have a cool suggestion. It saves you so much time. And so going through and trying to figure it out yourself, we've pre-watched the videos for you. And so you guys can go in um, and if there's ever any, which I don't think there is in the, any of the space stuff, but if there's ever any like, you know, you might want to watch for this and have it just be for older kids and we'll always put that in the notes for you guys as well. And of course, there's the library list for you. So just even more picture books because it's all about the books of rabbit trails. And again, these are all just suggestions. If you have different um, books about the moon at home, read different books about the moon. It doesn't matter. These are just suggestions. These aren't required. These are just to bring even more literature, <coughs> excuse me, even more literature into your home and into your lessons uh, just to give more of a richness to those lessons and just bring more different perspectives out there as well. Like one of my favorite moon books, which I guess is technically an astronaut book, is One Giant Leap. I bought this to go with our moon lesson. Is it in there? No. Does it matter? Absolutely not. It's one of my favorite books, so I'm going to throw it on into my pile, right? And then, of course, we have the more ideas page. So um, in all of our sciences, we have vocabulary words for your children to use. Again, if they're older, they can look them up themselves in the dictionary. 
um, because that's a great skill to have, to have those dictionary skills. If they're younger, you can just go over the words. Um, you can have them do some copy work on just a few. However, you need to make it work for your child at the level, level that they're at, because of course, this is for all elementary homeschoolers. So if you're having a little one do it, not a big deal. You can even skip the vocabulary, just talk about certain words. It's no pressure. And then those older kids can build some of those skills. And then there's going to be other um, fun ideas on here. And so this one has to calculate your weight compared to how it would be on the moon, um, to keep a moon journal, because of course there's different phases of the moon throughout every single month, every 28 days, right? As we're gonna have a new moon cycle. And so um, you can make your own moon calendar that way. Um, there's a lunar eclipse experiment on here. And then of course, a fun art project as well. So you're gonna find all kinds of stuff whether it's art, whether it's more science, sometimes we even dip into geography and different subjects and math and all kinds of stuff inside of the more ideas section. So this is really where it gets to be uh, the multi subjects coming in and really going down those rabbit trails and just having a really, really good time doing as many of these as you want to include. So all of this is meant to be done over two weeks. We do have a sample schedule for you. Um, on the page that I'll be linking down below as well. So you can get all the information. You can get a sample lesson. You can get the sample schedule, which will show you how you could break it up over two weeks if you wanted. That would be if it was being done um, all five days during the week. We like to do science more like two or three days during the week. So we obviously do bigger chunks, fewer days the week. Make it work for you. There's no right or wrong way to do it, um, but you can just kind of put you know, plug stuff into your planner however you want what, for what's inside of the lesson over those two weeks. Let's look at a few more of the books that are inside of this uh, curriculum. So again, these are just in the rabbit trails and library list section. They are not mandatory, but they are some beautiful books. We've done a really good job of just making sure we're going through and trying to find the very best books out there for each of the different topics inside of this. So Galileo's Journal is one of them. We also have Nicholas Copernicus. Mouse Jonat goes to Mars. The librarian who measured the Earth. And it's, oh, this is one of my favorites. I've been waiting to put this into a lesson is Starry Messenger. Anytime there's a Caldecott book, I am just a sucker for it. So let's talk about, let me get my computer back on over here. Let's talk about what's actually inside of the curriculum. What lessons are a part of it? Come on, mouse. I just got a new mouse and it's very touchy. <laughs> so I hope I can open this up. Of course, it's gonna give me problems. Here we go. Okay, there we go. I got it working. All right. Okay, so there are um, 14 different lessons inside of this curriculum. And so each of the lessons um, are introductions to space, the sun, Mercury and Venus, the earth, the moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, dwarf planets, asteroids, comets and meteors, stars and nebulas, galaxies and space exploration. And I think that last lesson is my favorite one in the whole curriculum. I am a sucker for space exploration and learning about like hidden figures and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it is a super duper fun curriculum. So a question I get most often about our science is can it be used for middle school? And here's my answer to that is in our house, yes. We used a lot of rabbit trails for my son when he was in middle school as well. Um, so we would just give him a little bit add-ons of doing some um, research projects, right? So if we're talking about sp space exploration, he can pick an astronaut and write a report on it. And that makes it completely um, age appropriate for him. So it's completely up to you if you wanna use any of these rabbit trails for any of your slightly older children like that. Because these books have so much in them. These are super duper high quality books that it's, absolutely appropriate to still read these to middle school kiddos. Oh my goodness, I love this. So pretty. Um, so yes, that is my answer, but it's based on what you wanna do in your own homeschool, right? So if you don't feel like you wanna use this for your middle schooler, then you can use something, you can add chapter books into it, whatever it is that you would like to do. This is technically written though for all elementary levels. So it's based on your discretion if you wanna stretch it up to that middle school. It's been super duper doable for us. 
All right, guys, I think that is it inside of our space curriculum. So I'm gonna put the links for you guys down below so you can check out our group and you can also check out more information, get your sample lesson, sample schedule, all of that stuff on our website. And I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.